What's up? What's happening you guys? Welcome back to my channel if you are new here. Thank you for clicking on this video. My name is Justice Maxwell and this is going to be a Q&A all about teaching English in Thailand. If you are new here, I am a teacher in Thailand. I have been teaching for maybe six months now and I get a bunch of questions all the time about my experience teaching in Thailand. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, I will put it here. I recently changed my handle, but I will put it here so that the next time I do something like this, you can ask me questions. I did get quite a few, so I will be answering them here today for you guys. Now, I just want to put out a quick disclaimer. I am answering these questions from my perspective based off of my experience. So my answers might not apply to absolutely every teaching kind of job in Thailand. They might not apply to you, you know? I'm just giving you guys my answers from my experience. I know after this video, I will probably still have a bunch of questions. And you guys, I think the best way for me to answer this and to be efficient is to create an ebook for you guys. So I am in the process of doing that currently. And this ebook is going to have so much information about teaching in Thailand. I'm including the kind of documents you need to bring beforehand, rules in Thailand that you have to abide by, things that you wouldn't even think about or know before coming here. I'll be explaining visas. I'll be explaining how to find housing. There's just gonna be a bunch of information, again, based off of my experience and what I have learned living here in Thailand and teaching in Thailand for the last six, seven months. So if you would like to support me and obviously have access to all of this information, I'm aiming to have my ebook complete next month. So definitely keep your eye out for that. Obviously, I don't get paid to answer all of your individual questions that I get DM'd on Instagram or left in the YouTube comments. So this would be a great way to support me. And again, a great way for you to have access to all of this valuable information that I wish I had before I started teaching because ciao. The amount of things that were sprung onto me once I had already signed my contract to teach, I was like, wow. Do you, do you guys not think you should have told me this beforehand? Now I am locked into this contract. Anyway, ciao. <laughs> let's stop rambling and let's get into these questions and hopefully I will be providing the insight that you guys need. So let's get into it. First question is, how do you like teaching over there? I would say teaching over here is, is really calm. <laughs> um, it's a pretty easy job, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I feel like because I have taught for a whole semester now, I've got to know my kids more, I feel like our relationship has developed more. So I'm understanding them a bit more and trying to, or learning how they respond to different things. Because typically in a Thai classroom, there are a lot of kids. Some classes I have about 42 kids. So that's really difficult to handle by yourself. So it's just about learning what's gonna work with this certain class, what's not gonna work with this certain class. And I think I kind of have that down pack now. So it's a breeze, I'm not gonna lie. It's a breeze, it's really chill. Um, the school that I work at is really chill. Some are not as chill as mine. So I'm very, very lucky and thankful that I am working where I am working. The next question is, can we see some of your work outfits? You guys, I have to dress like a milkmaid <laughs> to work. I look like milkmaid slash gypsy slash, I don't even know. I will insert a picture here, here, somewhere of a work outfit. But basically, <laughs> if you teach in Thailand um, and you're a woman, you have to wear something that covers your knees and covers your shoulders. And you cannot wear trousers. I often just wear a long black skirt or like a long dress and have something that's covering my shoulders. So yeah, <laughs> it's definitely not the most fashionable work outfit for sure. Next question, my favorite question. What is lunchtime like? And does the school feed you? I love lunchtime. It is my favorite time of day because I love food. <laughs> the way it works at my school, meals are not included in the job, basically. You have to finance your own meals. But meals at school are very, very, very cheap. Very, very, very cheap. I'm talking one pound for a meal. <laughs> so how it works is you will have your schedule of lessons for the day. So you might have two lessons from 
half eight till half ten and then you might have a gap and then another two lessons you go and eat lunch whenever you can if there is a gap you take the opportunity and you go and have your lunch <laughs> there is not a designated lunch time like how it works in the uk so it's not like the clock hits 12 p.m and everybody goes on break for lunch it's not like that you eat when you have a break okay <laughs> if you don't eat before i would say 1 p.m 12 1 p.m the food's gonna be gone <laughs> the selection is going to be very very thin so typically i will have lunch at like 10 11 in the morning that's just how the lifestyle is where i work at my school we do have like a little shop on site that you can go and get snacks and stuff so there's like a little cafe around the corner that i could go out to and get something if i wanted to so there hasn't been any kind of issue for me at all around that and i love the food at school the food at school is good as hell it's delicious i'm talking we have rice chicken and rice noodles and chicken we have sushi we have burgers we have hot dogs we have all kinds of deep fried food chow we have a lot of stuff bao buns fruit smoothies iced coffee we have it all <laughs> but not every school is like that i know i've posted on my instagram before um my meal at school and people have been like what the hell your school meals are so good like mine are so trash so it really just depends a lot of this um information and my answers are gonna depend on like where you teach because it just varies so so much so keep that in mind next question how long is your break i'm not too sure what you mean by this if you mean break between lessons or you mean like between semesters um but i'm gonna assume you mean between lessons uh it really depends on that day so typically in a day i might have four or five lessons to teach so say i've got four lessons that day i'll probably have two or three periods off where i can focus on something i'm doing work on this work on that go and get something to eat so it just depends on the day it's like imagine your uni timetable you have lectures at some point in the day and then you'll have like a period off it's the same kind of timetable each period is 50 minutes long so one lesson is 50 minutes one break is 50 minutes next question what are the requirements to teach in thailand so this is very dependent on the place that you teach if you teach at an international school for example they are probably going to have more requirements compared to teaching at a government school i teach at a government school i also teach through an agency so the only real requirement that they had was for me to have a degree that degree does not have to be in teaching it does not have to be in english it does not have to be related at all <laughs> which is crazy but that was the main requirement for my job role they do ask about prior experience teaching working with kids which i had and i obviously explained to them but the degree was the main thing at other schools or like i said international schools they might require you to have a degree that degree may have to be in english or education teaching something like that and they will also require you to have a TEFL, I believe it is. So that's teaching English at a foreign in a foreign language or something. I can't remember what it stands for. Hold on. Teach English as a foreign language. Yeah, I shouldn't doubt myself. Teaching English as a foreign language. So some places might require you to have this kind of TEFL certificate. I think there's quite a few different ones. There's like 120 hour certificates. There's various ones. Um, you will have to research that yourself depending on where you want to apply. Another requirement, which it could depend on the school or the agency that you apply to, they may only accept people from countries that have English as their first language or countries that are within Europe. So for example, I had a girl reach out to me and she was from a country in Africa. She spoke amazing English. She was studying linguistics at university, I believe. So her English was 1010. And she applied to my agency and they rejected her because of, I guess, her country of origin or her nationality. Now, I think this is mainly because of how the visas work. I think it is easier to get visas for certain countries. So that's something, again, that you'll have to look into and ask the individual school or agency that you apply to. And it's obviously something to be aware of. So I would say if you are looking to apply for a teaching job in Thailand, that should be one of the first questions you ask do you accept people from this 
this nationality or this region um, just to get that out of the way. Next question. Do you recommend living in Koh Samui? Um, this is definitely not related to teaching. <laughs> uh, do I recommend living in Koh Samui? I, don't, I haven't lived in Koh Samui, so I can't really make that recommendation. I love Koh Samui. I was there like just now. <laughs> it's a really great place, really lovely island. Um, I love the vibes, but I can't really make that recommendation because I haven't lived there. You would just have to go there and see if you like it. Next question. How many hours do you work a week? I have 22 hours of teaching a week. So where I am physically in the classroom. However, my days do not match up with that. I arrive to school at 7.30 in the morning. And this is because in Thailand, at most schools, if not all schools, they have a flag raising assembly in the morning, every morning of every weekday in the week. <laughs> so although the school day doesn't start until 8.30 in the morning, you have to be at school to attend the flag raising assembly. Furthermore, say you have two lessons that day. My two lessons fall on a Friday. I get them out of the way in the morning and then the rest of the day my schedule is empty. I cannot leave the school grounds until the school day has finished. And my school day typically finishes at 3.30, 4 p.m. It really just depends on whether you have a lesson later in the day. Let's say 3.30. That is my teaching day. 7.30 to 3.30, I have to be at school. Even if I only have two lessons in the morning, they're done, I have to remain on school grounds. I cannot leave. <laughs> Something else that I want to mention, but I will probably explain a bit more in depth in my ebook, is that there are many random holidays in Thailand. So you might get a message the day before saying that the following day is a Thai holiday and you don't have school. Amazing, great, day off. Alternatively, you might get a message saying, oh, it's Friday evening, but we have an English camp the next day on Saturday. We need you here from this time to this time. Oh, well now you've got to work a weekend. Obviously, again, this will depend on the school or the agency that you teach through, but within my contract, I know that I have to teach, I believe, one or two weekends a semester, which doesn't work out to be a lot, but it's just something to bear in mind. It might not be like the typical teaching it might not be like the typical teaching requirements in the UK. Like what is going on? Next question. What are the joys and challenges that come with teaching? Let's start with the challenges. I think this has changed quite a bit from when I started, but the challenges in the beginning were getting to school for 7.30 in the morning because that's freaking early, okay? <laughs> Managing a class full of kids that don't really speak English and have loads of energy, are eating sweets every second of the day. That was really challenging. Um, understanding how like the kind of logistics work from teaching or from having a job in Thailand. So understanding like the visas and what I have to do to make sure that, you know, my visas don't expire or that I haven't, you know, forgotten to renew them or inform someone, you know, just all of these like logistic things um they were like quite difficult to understand at the beginning but to be honest there's not that many challenges and like i said i feel like that has changed obviously from being there and teaching and from now gaining experience over time some of the joys with teaching english um i love my kids like i actually miss them i haven't been teaching obviously because our semester has finished and we've got summer holidays I miss my kids. They are crazy. They honestly frustrate me so much sometimes because they are so hyper, but I miss them. They're so cute. Like they're so different to kids in the UK. They're just really like, I don't know. They're so cute. Like there's a kid that like comes up to me at the end of the class and gives me a hug for no reason. And I'm just like, at first I was like, please don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> OCD but now I'm just like oh my god where is my little friend like to come and give me a hug like they're just really cute I feel like they're more caring than like kids in the UK they're not disrespectful how kids in the UK are they're just more cheeky if that makes sense yeah I really do enjoy I do enjoy my kids 
food, food at lunchtime is really great. Um, I think the job in general is just really chill. And like I said, I think I definitely got lucky with my school. We have what's called a coordinator, which I guess is similar to like a head of year, something like that. She's kind of just the go-to person if there's any issues or we have any questions about anything. And she is like, solid like she's really nice so really happy to to have her my colleagues are calm they're a bit nutty they're a bit strange but they're calm <laughs> i guess the final thing would be like the timetable i do have a lot of free time in the day although it's kind of split up and divided but it gives me time to work on things that i want to work on which i'm not supposed to do but what else am i really gonna do in the day so yeah <laughs> Next question, what company did you go through to teach? So I am not going to put my company's name on YouTube. One, because I'm not getting paid to promote them if I do. But what I will say is if you are very much serious about coming and teaching in Thailand, you have booked your flights, you have done research and you are applying for jobs. If you are ready and you would like to, you know, have a suggestion, you are more than welcome to send me a DM on Instagram and I will tell you I'm not going to withhold that information. But please only message me if you are very much serious. I will be happy to make a referral for you and this just kind of speeds up the process of your application kind of just makes the hr team aware that you know look someone's really interested they want to apply and i will make a commission if you successfully sign with the company so like i said i'm happy to give you this information but i'm not just going to put it out there for free because i need my coins baby okay i need some coins thank you <laughs> next question where do you get your beach sarongs again not related to teaching but i get them on the beach there's people that typically walk around like vendors selling stuff um so i normally just get them like on the beach but i might start selling them um i might just make a little storefront and just i'd just be finding really cute things on my travels and i feel like other people would enjoy them so if you are interested in purchasing anything you see that i have on like my instagram posts like my little beach sarongs or like jewelry glasses um let me know because i i should probably do that okay we're on to our last two questions so is there any time where you felt unsafe in thailand compared to the uk um no <laughs> no there has been one time where i felt unsafe and it was on the way home from work me and my um friend got in a taxi to come home from work and the taxi driver was definitely under the influence of some kind uh, i don't know he he was on something he was not right he was not right and he was driving all kinds of crazy he was doing all kinds of erratic movements that was the only time i felt unsafe in thailand a tip for you guys if you do come to thailand and you take a taxi when you get in the taxi there should be like some kind of identification on the dashboard in the left hand corner there should be a picture of the driver with their name on it and like some kind of like registration or something if that is not there i would say do not take that taxi get out immediately because they should have that and this driver that was moving all kinds of mad he didn't have that he didn't have it he didn't have it <laughs> i can't lie in thailand i do feel like i have my guard down a lot more than in london and sometimes i have to remind myself like justice just because you're in thailand doesn't mean like you can just walk anywhere and just not care about what is going on around you because it's always good to be aware of what's going on around you just just in case no i feel very safe in thailand i'm not gonna lie a lot of like concerns or things that i might be hesitant to do in the west i just doesn't it just doesn't come to my my mind living over here because i'm just like it, it just wouldn't happen so but you can never be too cautious you can never be too careful so keep your wits about you at all times okay i feel like i got through that quite quickly we have one more question and that is did you pay off all of your debts before leaving to thailand um and they specified student loans i believe this person was writing from america as well so i think it might work a little bit differently in the states but in the uk student loan is like imaginary debt i'm not gonna lie um <laughs> and what i mean by that is with student loan in the uk you don't have to start paying back your student loan until you are earning over 
a certain amount of money i believe it is like 25 grand before i left to thailand obviously i was working and i had started paying back my student loan however student loan is not the kind of debt where if you stop paying it back someone's gonna come after you to my knowledge anyway <laughs> it gets wiped clean meaning it gets completely like taken away once you hit a certain age i can't remember what that age is should i google it just from googling it says student loans are forgiven after 25 to 30 years after you graduate or when you turn 65 so i'm not gonna lie i probably won't pay back all of my student loan my student loan is probably like 50 grand <laughs> it's just it's not gonna get paid back i'm not gonna lie so no i did not worry about paying back my student loan because like i said it is just like imaginary debt as far as any other debts i do not have any other debts so i did not have to worry about paying them off if you do have any kind of debt i would not recommend you move in to thailand to teach here while you have those debts unless you get a high paying job because typically the salary is going to be a lot lower in thailand compared to wherever you're from if that's in the states or uk or whatever you'll be making more money over there typically so i would not come here with any any huge major debts speaking of salary i forgot our main question that so many people asked what are the earnings like what does the salary range from similar to the uk what's the pay like all of you just wanted to know about the money 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 i guess money talks baby <laughs> my salary i'm not gonna tell you what my salary is because that's very freaking cheeky <laughs> you wouldn't just go and ask bill down the road how much money he makes so i will give you ballpark figures the salary for teaching in thailand it again like everything else depends on what kind of school you teach at where you teach, if you go for an agency, or you teach directly with a school. As I mentioned before, there are international schools and government schools. There's obviously different things like universities, um, like preschool, elementary school as well, but I'm just gonna talk about these two right now. So as I explained earlier, with an international school, they will likely have more requirements, they will likely need you to have more qualifications, and they will likely pay you more money. So. I think figures that I have seen can range from 60,000 to 80,000 on the higher end a month. And that is in Thai, Thai currency, Thai baht. Obviously doesn't sound like a lot of money, but you have to remember that the cost of living in Thailand is significantly lower than the cost of living in the States and in the UK. If you teach in a government school, I believe the salaries are typically a bit lower. And if you teach via an agency, the salary again will be even lower. The agency obviously has different responsibilities to you, and for fulfilling those responsibilities, they will take a cut of your salary. So if you teach for an agency, you could be making from 30,000 to 50,000 baht, but it is really, really dependent. A lot of agencies or companies will have certain bonuses or like I mentioned, referral schemes, or once you've completed your contract, here's an extra 10,000 baht. It also depends on the position that you have within that company. So there are head teacher roles. There are just the standard teacher roles. There are science teacher roles. It really, really depends. I would say to summarize, you'll probably make the most money teaching in an international school and you'll probably make the least money teaching via an agency and i believe those are all of the questions so i really hope i answered everything that you guys wanted to know i hope it was clear if i need to clarify anything please just let me know in the comments and i will try my best to clarify for you again keep your eyes open for my ebook i'm working really hard to get this finished and like i said it's just gonna have way more detail way more information in there i hope this was useful don't forget to follow me on my socials they will be in the description down below and i will see you guys in my next video thank you so much for watching bye